20 meters below the surface. And that's only 2% of the ocean's total depth. We can go way deeper. And what we find along the way is nothing short of unbelievable. At 200 meters, you reach the twilight zone. Sunlight fades to darkness. Sharks prowl. Squid flash with light. Down here, bioluminescence is survival. It feels less like an ocean and more like a galaxy alive beneath the waves. At 1,000 meters, the midnight zone. Here, no light ever reaches. The pressure? Like carrying 50 jumbo jets stacked on your chest. Or about 1,600 elephants pressing down at once. <laughs> and still, creatures thrive. The giant squid and the anglerfish, in slantern glowing in endless night. At 4,000 meters, welcome to the abyss. A frozen graveyard of shipwrecks. This is where the Titanic rests, preserved in silence since 1912. And in 2012, filmmaker James Cameron descended here alone to see this alien world with his own eyes. At 6,000 meters, the Hadal Zone. Named for Hades, the underworld itself, here, life clings to volcanic vents that spew boiling minerals from Earth's core. Creatures built not just to survive, but to endure the impossible. And finally, the bottom, the Mariana Trench. 11,000 meters down, so deep that Mount Everest could sink here and still be swallowed whole. And just to make it easy for you, 11 kilometers is also the altitude where commercial planes fly. Except here, it's not sky above you, it's water, crushing, endless water. We've mapped Mars more clearly than our own oceans, and every dive reveals something new. Perhaps the strangest discoveries on Earth still wait for us in the deep. How can a fish survive in the deep ocean where a human body would be crushed flat? <laughs> no, really, because at just a thousand meters down, the pressure is like a hundred elephants standing on your chest. By 10,000 meters, it's like balancing the weight of the Eiffel Tower on a single toe. So why don't deep sea creatures explode? The secret is inside their bodies. Unlike us, they don't have air-filled lungs or fragile gas pockets that collapse. Instead, their bodies are filled with water, flexible, compressible, perfectly adapted to match the crushing weight outside. Their cells, reinforced with special proteins, almost like microscopic armor, keeping every structure from breaking apart. And their membranes, packed with unique fats that stay fluid in freezing darkness, while ours would shatter. Some even carry chemicals like TMAO, <laughs> the same stuff that makes fish smell fishy, a built-in shield that lets life function where no life should. And yet, these creatures don't just survive, they thrive. Giant squids stretch their arms into blackness Anglerfish dangle glowing lures like living lanterns. Strange, ghostly jellyfish drift, unbothered by pressure that would crush steel. So next time you imagine the deep sea, remember this. We see it as deadly, impossible, hostile. But for the creatures that live there, it's simply home. The water you're drinking right now might have once been inside a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, claws, teeth, the whole package. See, the water on Earth, it's ancient. It doesn't vanish, it doesn't get replaced. It just moves. From oceans to clouds, from clouds to rain, from rivers to bladders, and from bladders to toilets, yeah. And that's just the cycle, because along the way, it's been everywhere. Maybe a Spartan once washed his wounds with it after battle, or maybe it swirled in the golden goblet of a Roman emperor, or maybe it was poured into Cleopatra's private pool, deep inside her palace. <laughs> Either way, it's been around. Water exists in a closed system, which means no new water comes and no old water leaves. 
It's the same water that boiled in Viking kettles, that steamed off samurai armor in the midst of battle. It passed through warriors, through monks, through emperors, and now it's in you. So next time you take a sip, just remember you're not just drinking water, you're sipping Earth's memory. When a lake freezes, life should die, right? But because ice floats, that single strange trick is literally the reason life survived on Earth. And that's only one of water's mysteries. It was in the oceans that life first began. And only here on Earth does water exist in all three states, liquid, solid, and gas. 70% of our planet is covered in it. And yet, the more we study water, the stranger it becomes. Deep in the Bahamas, hidden caves hold a divide called the halocline. Fresh water above, salt water below, and the two never mix. Even fish on opposite sides can't cross. Their bodies simply aren't built for it. And inside these blue holes, explorers have found fossils, ancient formations, and even creatures that may predate the dinosaurs. A true time capsule. But the story of water stretches beyond Earth. Scientists believe much of it came from space, carried here by meteorites billions of years ago, delivering not just water, but maybe even the building blocks of life itself. And still, water defies the rules. Ice floats, clouds weighing thousands of tons drift like feathers, and rain begins with collisions so small we can barely see them. From caves to glaciers, from oceans to clouds, all life depends on water. Without it, there is no forest, no animals, no us. Water is the pulse of Earth itself. Humans only access about 10% of their cerebral capacity. <laughs> Not bad for a fraction of our brain. And there's one creature on this planet that uses a little more dolphins, around 15%. And with that, they navigate the ocean through echolocation, sending signals so precise they can see with sound. So what happens if a human goes beyond 10%? At 20%, you'd gain total control of your body, slow your heartbeat, heal your wounds, even regenerate cells. At 40%, the world itself bends to your will move objects without touching them, reshape matter with nothing but thought. At 60%, every sense explodes open. You could smell and distinguish hundreds of scents at once, hear a single voice in a crowded street, see details from miles away, and you'd access your full memory. Remember the taste of your mother's milk as a newborn? Feel the hidden roots of a tree stretching deep into the earth. And at 100%, that's the frontier we can't explain. Understanding time itself, comprehending dimensions beyond our own, accessing the laws of the universe, not as theories, but as truths you can hold. With 100%, you wouldn't just live in the universe, you would become part of it. The human eye, an evolutionary masterpiece. It can detect millions of colors focus faster than the best camera lens, and adjust to a single photon of light in the dark. <laughs> Sounds impressive, right? But compared to other creatures, our vision is surprisingly limited. Eagles can spot a rabbit from two miles away, their eyesight eight times sharper than ours. Meanwhile, mantis shrimp don't just see colors. They see colors we can't even imagine. Ultraviolet, polarized light, a rainbow beyond rainbows. Snakes? They don't just see in the dark. They sense the heat of your body as if your skin were glowing. To them, every living thing burns like a candle in the night. And bees? They see ultraviolet trails painted on flowers, invisible roadmaps guiding them straight to nectar. To us, the petals are just pretty. To them, they're neon arrows pointing to survival. Even cats. <laughs> Their eyes reflect more light, letting them hunt in near total darkness. That little glint you see in the night? It's a mirror built for predators. So while our eyes are good at capturing the beauty of the world, 
other animals live in entirely different realities. Hidden colors, invisible patterns, glowing heat, worlds we'll never see. And that raises the question, do we really see the world as it is, or just the tiny slice our biology allows?